Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. It's me! I know, uh, you I, you missed me. It's been a whole week since... You, look at the two weekends in a row that I'm... Well, it's not quite the weekend, but two weeks in a row that I'm actually getting to be with you. Uh, doesn't that make you feel better? I know, because we, we've had so many times of... It's been two weeks. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, hopefully... Hopefully, I don't think I've had any three weeks in a row, but I want to be back weekly, and as I've been telling y'all, I'm about to start a new career, and I'm working full-time again. And I hope everything is be going back to normal. I'm going back to pre-COVID days where I, I think I can get a show together every week. But well, I get it, gotta get used to the schedule. But my plan is to have a show every week throughout October because I have fun stuff to talk about. It's October, and I, I had a guest I had planned on having, and things have just not worked out. So we might not have as much information on Rankin Bass as good old Jonathan Johnson over at Diz Radio has, but we're going to do the best we can because Mad Mad Monster Party. Philip and I watched it here, and the last boy Phil is here. Hello. Hello. How's it going? So we are going to discuss the Mad Monster Party here because uh, that's our, our first kick off to Halloween. I've got a lot of other plans for some other stuff for Halloween, some more fun to have. So stay with us. Keep with us every month, but we've got so much stuff to geek out about. My gosh. And you heard about DC Fandom, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm looking forward. Oh, well, it already happened. Well, I realized that, but I mean, I'm looking forward to all, <laughs> all that, the stuff that DC they stuff they're going to do. Yeah. You bet. Now, see, I'm more of a Marvel guy, so I don't think I got quite as excited. Well, I, but, I like both. You know that. Yeah. I, I always I always compare to Elvis and the Beatles. You know, I'm more of an Elvis man than a Beatles <laughs> oh, man, but I like both. We got some Beatles stuff to talk about, too, oh, brother. Oh, good. Oh, yes. I'm glad I used that. I wish I could play the trailer for you when we get there, but Ooh-hoo. but I can't because it's a lot of Beatles music, and I don't want a copyright strike. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, there's some great Beatles news out there, which we kind of knew about. I'd heard about it before I mentioned it, but it's coming up so close. Good. So close. It's almost right beside you like I am <laughs> creeping and stalking behind you because it's Halloween time. Don't give, me, <laughs> don't, don't give me nightmares. I'm in your head. That's scary enough. <laughs> I'm in your head. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so the first thing we like to do is what I like to call some host chatter, which, of course, we like to ask the questions, what have you been watching? Well, and, uh, uh, go ahead. So, now, of course, I will mention I'm still, and we were talking about this earlier, still watching Star Trek The Next Generation, going through with it. And, oh, I love that show, because I, when I, especially when I come across an episode that I actually don't remember ever seeing. Oh, that's I good. love that show with every new episode, even more. That Because that's, you know, because when I was a kid, they had, uh, like, I think he was, it might have been, but no, it might have been part of the whole thing. But you, I remember watching He Man in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. And then they'd have the uh, 1960s Batman, and then Star Trek would come on. Mm-hmm. I could never get into Star Trek because it really wasn't aimed at kids. That old no, Star Trek is very, very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. And, uh, but uh, I didn't get so much into Star Trek, but I saw Wrath of Khan and Wrath of Khan. I said, like, ooh, that's pretty good. Great but I, show. I didn't quite understand all of it until later. Yeah. So, but I never really got really into Star Trek. And so, I was, you know, and even when Next Generation is like, oh, goodness, another Star Trek series. My goodness, that'll probably be boring. Mm-hmm. But then I went ahead and watched one. I was like, Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is so cool. And so the next generation was my gateway drug to really get in. Yeah, and I started watching more of the movies. I'm like, oh man, this is good stuff. Yeah, because even the the only run of the other movies besides Wrath of Khan that I had seen was that uh, fifth one where they have like well, I guess he's supposed to be one of Spock's relatives that tries yeah, to take him to meet God. Brother, he's half brother. We went down to some relatives I have in Lebanon, and they they it's where they have the one theater in town, and, and, and they had to wait for. <laughs> 
like three months before a movie that was a mainstream movie oh, yeah. got into their theater. And so my cousin and my uncle were, you know, my, my, my uncle down there, he's a huge sci-fi guy. Yeah. So they were super excited to new Star Trek movie. And so we all went to go see the Star Trek movie. And I was like, well, other than I did love the, uh, the beginning when Kirk yeah. was trying to climb up the cliff and uh, I believe it's bones and Spock or something mm-hmm. up on the, the shoe or the boots that fly up to him. I mean, it had some good funny moments and like, I know this ship like the back of my head, bong, you know, yeah. had some good funny moments, but that was just, it wasn't enough to pull me in. But the next generation, Poor William Shatner. He directed oh, that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And William Shatner has now. Well, I, I don't know if you call it space. They got. Yeah. They only got up to where you're at zero G. I mean, he didn't fully penetrate out to go into flat out orbit, but he was up enough to where he's zero G. Yeah. Technically, he was there. So and technically, he, he's he there. Was a I mean, he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't full on in orbit, but he was up there. Yeah. And see, now here's what's funny. Okay, because I, I don't remember which one of the two. It's like Jeff Bezos and uh, um, the Tesla guy. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. That guy. They're, they've been competing with their their commercial space companies. Sure. And uh, I think it was the Tesla guy. He got his up there, and he was going to have the oldest person who'd ever been in orbit. And it was actually that was like some old astronaut that had uh, he had not gotten to go up for something or something like that. So he was like, well, you're going to get a chance to go up. And now you're the oldest person to ever go into orbit. So then I think this was Jeff Bezos from Amazon. His thing's like, oh, yeah, well, you know who's older than that? William Shatner. How can you beat that? I mean, <laughs> yeah. that, it, hey, uh, kudos what a to poke the, in the eye, man. Kudos to the astronaut. Obviously, I don't yeah. want to take anything yeah. away from that. And but that's fair. Uh, it was really yeah. great for him to finally get to go up. Uh, I did. I watched that entire sure, lot. That one streaming. That's and great. the look on the guy's face is like, I'm finally. You know, that's wonderful. I was going to cry. Shatner, man. <laughs> Shatner cried. And, oh, of course he did, and and, and was rightly so. Yeah, he got to do it and. And he spoke about uh, Leonard Nimoy and oh, and Leonard would have loved it too. Oh, he would have loved it. if they uh, could have did it together. That would have been great. Oh, uh, especially get all three of them. That would have been with, great. With Force Kelly. And I love William Shatner. You yeah. know, and I, I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. I love William Shatner very, very much, and I want to give him a salute because something he did for me that I'll never forget. Oh yeah, that I w- had gone through the brain surgeries and everything I've gone through. And I heard he was going to be in town for a Comic Con, and uh, I had been in the hospital for a month. And this was, I'd, I've gone through a lot of them. Anyway, I came out of that for a whole month, got to go, and uh, I had to cart around in a wheelchair. Yeah, I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Him and my other friend James. I come out of it. Uh, I, I said, so I'm going. And so I went, and there I was, still with staples in my head and everything else. Mm-hmm. Went wearing a Captain Kirk uh, uh, jacket yep. and uh, the yellow one and everything else. I went there. And William Shatner and them, by the way, William Shatner and them, they didn't even charge me no. they, for for absolutely nothing. They took me in and uh, allowed me to get my picture with William Shatner. And I love and appreciate William so much for that. Yeah. He's one of my favorite guys. He's my captain. Hey, I love Picard too, okay? Oh, but yes. he's my captain. Captain, my captain. I love him for it. Yeah. Always will. I'm so thrilled he got to go up there. That's great. He's not, he's your number one guy. That's right. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> so yeah, so it was really pretty. I, I like that people were actually playing with the colors of the suits. Yes. They were all wearing blue, but people were messing around and putting him in his Captain Kirk colors and, and putting everybody else red. in red. Yeah, that's great. It's like, maybe somebody should tell them. I think some people thought that was a real uniform. Yeah, it's like, no, that. when you see yeah. the, I, I had already seen the pictures. We're all wearing the blue and stuff, yeah. but that was still cute. Yeah. Something else though, that I was watching this week and you might remember this movie. And I realized something watching this movie. The Burbs. It oh, was on, yeah. Uh, That's uh, a Peacock, fun film, yeah. And which, even though, you know, we're using a paid subscription to Peacock, I had to watch ads for some reason in that. Oh, uh, yeah. Cause uh, it, but, some, uh, some shows they do. But uh, The Burbs, it's, it's a, and I'd only, I actually only seen it once before. Heather had never seen it and everything, getting to watch it. But, uh, and I think Joe Dante directed it, and I think yeah. he directed Inner Space as well. Because you do have a couple actors from Inner Space. Yeah, you have, that's uh, a good show. Wendy and the store manager from mm-hmm. from the grocery store in Inner Space are both in it. But I noticed something. You know, when Tom Hanks used to do comedies, and even yeah. when he still does comedy with Toy Story, I think he really got the role because he is almost like you know, like Barney Fife could be really funny at being the nervous and freaking out. He's good in the Tom going Hanks over would be great yeah. with his great. He would always have this flip out moment that was just hysterical. He he, <laughs> I think. When he goes overboard, if you want to call it yeah. that, goes crazy. He did the same thing with uh, Turner and Hooch. Yeah, that's it. I'm getting my gun. <laughs> yeah, he, he. There's something about him just losing his mind, if yes. you will. I love it. I and love then, it. And then the money pit when everything the just, money the, pit the tub or whatever crashes through there, and he just. <laughs> 
he just he, cracks up laughing. He did it uh, even in Family Ties when he played their uncle. Oh yeah, he, he was good in that. Yeah, too. he became a drunk in the show. Yeah, it, it, but he was it was because there's something about someone who is on the board, uh, you know, on that borderline of going crazy and the. the Comedians have a way of being serious and funny all at the same time. Michael Keaton used yeah. to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah. He was his stand-up was actually not bad. Oh, it was great. I've seen and some footage. He was, he was good at it, and, and yeah. there, there's something they could be serious. They could be great. That's the best part because yeah. they're they're on that borderline. And I Michael Keaton had that great dry oh, delivery in, a, in his movies. Yeah, uh, he had, when he was when he was doing comedies, yeah. he had that great hilarious. dry, and he's got those expressive eyebrows that he oh, can do. It's yeah. just so good, oh, which really worked great for Batman. He had that moment when he's like, Whoop, what? you know, yeah. Batman. Returned Turns, I think even there, there, there's like that one thing where he kind of when uh, when Selena Kyle and Batman Returns kind of pulls that gun. You say it reminds you of your brother Matthew. I remember yeah. he told me once where he, for his his eyes and he's darting back and forth like she just pulled the gun out. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Well, he is outstanding. Yeah. You know, oh, we joking. got some stuff to talk about him oh, too, brother. Too. Now, <laughs> by the way, now what else are you watching right now? Uh, well, that was the thing. It was like, oh, I'm still on the burbs. But yeah. but, but I was the other thing. Like Tom Hanks. Oh, hi, kitty cat. I got a kitty just jumped on my lap. Yes, okay, you can sit in my lap. You just have to be good. Uh, but Tom Hanks, even in Toy Story. He has a freak out moment. You are a toy. Oh, yeah. You're a child's plaything. He's yeah. so good at that. Yeah. And he has some of the serious uh, roles as well. Yeah. Not, not yeah he's good Gump. as a serious actor. Not yeah. in Forrest Gump or anything like that yeah. right, uh, or anything. But in some of the other ones, he does uh, cast away. Of course, you know, in some of those moments, he kind of goes obviously. Wilson. Yeah, he kind of yeah. has to. I mean, but that's more dramatic. For dramatic. Yeah, that's not, not funny. Not funny. Yeah. Because for some reason, we we felt it too. Like Wilson was real to us. But if you ever go Ooh. through any kind of psychological thing, Cat, you need to quit climbing around and you just kind of do those emotional. Fall. Here, I'm gonna put you on this chair. You kind of go through those emotional moments. Oh, it's there. just how it is. Okay. It's just how it is. Yeah. Uh, sorry, all the folks about the cat. Uh, when I sit down, uh, the, our smaller cat loves to sit in. in um, she likes to curl up in between my legs. And when we sit down at these chairs, she thinks she can do that. You fit in there, too. But she doesn't fit so good. Um, and she doesn't sit still because she can't get herself. She can't wedge in between my legs because I'm, I'm, there's not much chair there. And so she just wiggles around and she can't sit still. So that's what all that was, folks. Now, as so. far as as far as what I'm uh, watching right now. Yeah, because I think I've got everything that I need to say about the burps. Yeah. Uh, as far as what I'm Other watching right now. It's good. If you have Peacock, you should go watch it. It's a great old movie. I'm watching several shows right now. I'm watching the Cosby Show. Oh, indeed. And I'm watching, and that's a good old sitcom. I'm watching. Whatever y'all think about Bill Cosby and what he's done. Yeah, it's still um, great, great. He still actor. has produced some great entertainment. Yeah, uh, I'm getting ready to watch uh, an, a Bill Cosby movie. That, it's a horrible movie, but my brother Leonard bought Part it. Part Six. Me. Yes. I but, love that terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it, my brother bought it for me for my birthday, and he told me I have to watch it. He goes, Don't make me waste my entire dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I said, I won't. I'll do it for you. I've seen so, that movie multiple oh, times. Oh, it's I'll terrible. Admit. And uh, it's terrible. It's one of those terrible movies that are fun to watch because they're so bad. And then, uh, and then I've been watching Major Dad, which has been fun. And I've also been watching Sanford and Son, and that's been fun. Um, I don't know if you ever used to watch Sanford and Son. Uh, I've watched. You know, I haven't seen all of it, but I've seen quite a bit. Of, oh, this is it. There's the one. Yeah. yeah. And then Smith, I'm coming home. I'm baby. coming home to you. Yes. And then that the nasty old woman that hated him. Oh yeah, I haven't got to her uh, yet, but because I'm, I'm starting from the beginning. Oh wow, I didn't realize she wasn't there. No, in the beginning. not the very beginning. But he said others, and his son is is funny. Yeah, Lamont. He, he just had a birthday in real life, but mm. yeah, he's, he's still a, alive. Mm -hmm, that's good. I know old Red Red Sanford. Yeah, he, he, uh, uh, no, well, Fred Sanford Fred is the Sanford. character, but Red Red Skeleton. No, I mean, Red, Red, Red Skeleton. Red, somebody yeah, else. Oh, Red. Uh, Dang it! I usually Dang remember it, yeah. right away. Oh, and his well, his comedy, Red is, Fox. Red Fox, his comedy. He's funny, but it's filthy. Yeah. Ooh, he was filthy. Yeah, but he was. Uh, luckily, he couldn't do that on television. <laughs> You're right. If you can't do this on television. <laughs> you can do it on television now. Yeah. Yeah. Praise, praise the Lord, you couldn't then, and you should yeah. be, should be able to. Now. Uh, what but happened anyway. about you can't do that on television? I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Some of you got that joke. Some yeah. of you got that joke. Here's a slime. Boom. Here's the slime. <laughs> right. Slime time. That's What's right. Called? We got acorns falling on the ceiling, y'all. And uh, then I think that's about it as far as what I'm watching right watch now. Watch I'm going it. back and forth. Although I have watched a few uh, Halloween cartoons. Oh, yes. And we, in fact, watched one we're going to talk about later, which I already previewed Mad Monster Party. Mm -hmm. It's a Rankin Bass. They actually did make some Halloween shows. Yeah. No, I so, don't know about a whole lot, but they did do some. They did do some. And we watched one. In fact, there's one that they did. And well, I'm pretty well, sure. Save it for when we talk about it later, though. Ouch. I, I, I was just previewing for later. Oh, I was going to say, go okay, we'll get to this. Say, yeah. say, keep that thought. Keep that thought. I but will. save it for later. <laughs> so now the question is, what have you been playing? And for those of you 
I don't have that many people on it yet, but I have the Neverland official gaming channel that I've been doing Scare Play 2021, where I'm playing scary games. Although I haven't played one today because I'm working. <coughs> pardon me. Drinking water. When I work on the show for a day, I sometimes don't get a chance to sit and play. And so and when I don't get it recorded on the weekend and I, you know, I so I haven't played anything today, but I think what I might do later and we'll see if y'all watch the YouTube channel, maybe I'll make Philip play a scary game that he's never played before. And that might be fun later. But I was I finished Alien Isolation. Ah, it's pretty good. Finally. It's intense. Ah, it's intense. I haven't. Uh, because uh, you because. Know, I saw aliens before long before I saw alien. Yeah. Aliens. It's a little scary, but it's more of like an action horror. Yeah. And it's kind of an adventure, a thrilling adventure like Jurassic Park. But the original alien is straight up suspense. Scary. I want to watch aliens with my nephew. I I had him watch alien and he loved it, but he was terrified. too. Of course. That has some terrifying moments. And he was, uh, he was really in it. And I noticed I, I would never say this to him personally. And he won't hear this, so it'll be okay. But uh, he put his legs up. I noticed at one point. I pulled him up on yeah, the gadget. I noticed it, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't say anything, but I noticed that he was getting into it. <laughs> well, imagine that you were one of them characters. Oh, man. That's what this game is like. Oh, cool. You're playing Amanda Ripley. And oh. So you hear, you hear that, you know, this, an android comes in and says, hey, there's a ship that's docked over at the space station that says they found the Nostromo. Ooh. And we found the block, the uh, recording box that has all the, the journals on it so we can finally find out what happened to your mother. So we want you to, the company wants you to be able to come over. Because you know one of the things with aliens, the companies are so corrupt and oh, nasty. Oh, they stink. They're uh, terrible. But it's like they, they want you to be able to come. They, they figure they owe it to you so you can find out what happened to your mother, Ellen. So this is supposed to be her daughter, basically? This is her daughter. Oh, okay. And this happens in between alien and aliens. But, you know, this is before, you know... Uh, but you do get a kind of a look that the company, as Paul Reiser's character shows you, they knew full well oh, what they cool. had. And they because you, you get onto the space station and it's already been destroyed. And and as typical, it is it's put in television shows, movies and games. When some sort of apocalyptic thing happens, humans turn on each other. They're, they go survival mode and they, they turn against every other human except for the people that are in their little clique. Yeah. So you've got that going on. You've got the androids on board that have gone into full murder, murder bot mode. And in the process of this, there's an alien stalking you. Yes. And it can hear you. Oh, I get it. And depending upon the intensity level of the difficulty level. And you can even set it up to where, because you know, the PS4 has a little microphone in the controller. Sure. You can turn that on if you really want to. Or if you have a headset on, you can turn it on to where it can hear you breathe. And if you if you make it, if you say something too loud, it'll hear that. (laughs) <laughs> and it'll get you. I turned that off because I was going to be talking into a microphone because I was doing a live stream. So I was like, no, that wouldn't be fair. But, oh, you know, not to spoil too much, but after you've dealt with the one alien and you think, oh, we're going to breathe again. You go to the core because you're trying to you know reset the core on the space station. There's a flipping hive. Oh, man. And I got stuck in that hive for a while because trying to get out because there was face huggers everywhere and all kinds of stuff. And even when you deal with the hive, a bunch of the aliens come right on out of that hive and they're still running around that space station. You get a deal. Instead of now just having one stalking you, now there's a bunch of them stalking you all over the space station. And I finally got through it, but I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end. I wonder if I got a different ending than what you would, because I didn't do it at the super hard difficulty level. Because yeah. I wanted to get through and experience the story so I could share it all with you. But if you're all for an intense bit of fun, come on over to the scare play. I also played The Evil Within, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed that one as well. But oh my gosh, Alien Isolation has some seriously intense moments when you hear that thing stomping around and you're ducking behind something and say, please don't see me. <laughs> and I don't even know how the thing sees or smells or hears because it has no ears. It has no eyes, but it has that weird. Like, I think the dome of their head must Sen- have sensors sensory, or something. Yeah. And it knows where you are. Mm-hmm. And it wants to eat you. Not really. It wants to mount you on the wall and, and harvest you. Yeah. But it'll kill you multiple times. But at one point, yeah, I, you as part of the story, you do get mounted on the wall. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I'm spoiling something. But yeah, there was, there, I got to a point where I thought I had finished the game. I was like, yes, that's the last task I needed to do. I'm escaping. And then, uh oh, hi, there it is. Cinematic. And oh, look, <laughs> where are we, Amanda? Oh, we're stuck to the wall. And oh, look, there's an egg right there. We better get off this wall. Because <laughs> y'all know what happens when they stick you to the wall with an egg nearby. Mm-hmm. 
You're That's being right. there for reproduction. That's right. Thankfully, I never had to come across a queen because I don't know what I'd have done. I'd have been, I'd been like, where is that construction machine? But yes. So come on over to the Neverland official gaming channel <laughs> and watch me freak out playing to trying to play Alien Isolation. I spent when I first had the alien showing up, I spent so much time hiding in the locker because any little noise, I didn't know if it was right outside. And he's not talking about the game. He's talking about in real life. Yeah, sure. I went and ducked under the couch. <laughs> so, but that's the thing is, you know, I, I've gotten so used to survival horror games that I, I don't really get scared by them. But it's when you're trying to win and you're trying to not have your character die, it still creates that intensity. If you're like, oh, man, I don't want to get that, you know. But I get to where when it catch me, you'd hear me a lot of times like, ah, oh, dang it. Instead of some yeah. people going like, ah, but I was like, dang it. Yeah. Because I'm more like gaming mode. So, <laughs> but yeah. So after I finished that, I've started up uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica X because that's one of the games in that series. That's, it's not part of the main series, but I've never actually finished it. Even though I've played a lot of it, I've never completed it. So I'm working on playing through that now, which hopefully I will finish by the end of October to complete Scare Play 2021. So come join me. We're having lots of fun playing scary games. And like I said, I think today I'm going to make Philip play because you've never played a Resident Evil game before. I might. No, I can't do them very well. Um, part of it is my eyes won't allow some of it to oh. focus on it. And uh, I just can't do it as well. No, oh, uh, cause I, I thought maybe the remake of resident evil. I've I may be able to do a little bit. I always try to do some games. I, I at least got to get you. I'm not a gamer a like, like others, chat. but I do try to play some games. Yeah. I, um, I play with my nephews. I play video games when they come yeah. over. We call, duties, call like of Duty. Lots of Call of Duty. And they, they love that. In Lots fact, of Fortnite. <laughs> in fact, I'm looking for it. Yeah, I play Fortnite with my nephew because he loves that. So I play with him and he enjoys that. And then uh, I play wrestling games. But I don't oh, indeed. Uh, play as much as I, I used to because I study a lot. I do a lot of study of yeah. the Bible and all. Yeah, kind of with a pastor, being a pastor, you kind of have to make yeah. sure you know the word. <laughs> yeah, I know the word. And I do Even a lot of study. Even if somebody on Facebook was trying to tell you you didn't know stuff and yeah, you're just you like, know. you got to have been rolling your eyes. Yeah, you know. He, I, well, uh, yeah. And then because uh, I'm not a flat earther. I just not that. <laughs> right. And then, uh, because we studied the Bible yes, and not, uh, not crazy theories. theories. That's it. So, um, and, and by the way, I'm not insulting you if you yeah. have to just I go by the word. Yeah. Anyway, so when it comes to... Um, when it comes to the games and all, I still enjoy wrestling games because I can create and I like yes. to create. I like to draw and all. So I create and then I enjoy uh, doing some of the Call of Duty because sometimes I'm stressed out. So Call I enjoy just going to shoot some people. Yes, well. <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of fun to do. And I love the backgrounds that you get to see. Yeah, yeah that's, they especially really in that one that we playing this in the '80s and we're in the mall. Yeah, oh, that's that. right. There's a new one love coming out it. that I'm getting ready to get in November because I already paid for it. And it'll Already. be Already Yeah it'll be World War Two, But it's Oh another be, World War Two. It's gonna be in Japan Ooh And it's gonna be some, A lot with it. I don't think it's just World War Two though From what I've seen There's gonna be some um, A little bit of uh, Maybe Korean But I know that it, It's uh, I could be wrong on that But it looks like There's gonna be quite a bit to it Ooh. And so uh, I did enjoy that other World War Two When they made that so, the, When they redid Because they started with World War Two, But I love when they went back to it That was a yes. great game So I'll be honest Very with Band you, of Brothers I, I paid uh, thing. I paid the extra so that I did. could not just get the game, but get all the extra details, all yes. of it, because I want to get it all. Get it I, all. I love playing. I'm having with, fun playing with my folks I, in this I, thing. I love playing with all the extra doodads, I always call it. And when people come over, because to be truthful, you know, I enjoy the story of it. What I get out of it the most is whenever you can hunt each other down or team up with each yeah. other. That's what I love the most. That's about that's it. fun. Yeah, it's a blast. It's fun. So I enjoy the games. I really I'm Batman. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I've been having too much fun because I'm, I'm trying to keep close to my microphone and yeah. talk talk a little quietly so I don't pick up on Philip's microphone so bad. Yeah, I've been enjoying it a little too much. You might be right. Indeed. <laughs> I sound more like Batman, right? Though, than I did Robert than Robert Pattinson sounds like Batman, but I'll get into that later. Yeah, there was a whole thing there. But anyways, it's time for us to get into some news. Happy, happy music. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. Now, you've never gotten to play any Animal Crossing, but I think I've shown you some Animal Crossing you on the have, Switch. You might have, but it sounds familiar, but I don't think I've ever played it, no. Animal Crossing New Horizons, It's uh, I don't know how many games in that series they've made so far, but they had this really fun video on the 15th where they announced all the fun new stuff. They're basically calling it animal crossing or new horizons 2.0. The last free update 
is going to have some returning characters. Uh, there's a museum there in Animal Crossing where you could because you can collect fossils and, and when you catch fish and bugs, you put them in the museum. They're going to put an expansion in the museum because if you go to a museum, they t- frequently have a, a like restaurants. I remember it now, yes, or something. But they're going to put in a coffee shop. Oh, and so they have a character named Brewster that he's going to be in there. And that's funny, Brewster. Because oh, he's I making see. coffee. I see. So you can go and buy coffee and you can sit there and have your friends meet you online to sit around and drink coffee. You can meet with your I island friends. I remember you showing it to me. It's almost kind of a Disney World-ish looking thing. Uh, In like a way, because everybody's an animal but you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. very cute. It's yes. very light. It's very fun. It's very relaxing. So you're going to get this whole new thing. You can also invite specific characters using, guess what? The Animal Crossing Amiibo figures. <laughs> so Nintendo's finding a way to give you, give us your money. What a shock. Give us your money. Because Nintendo is the greediest company, I swear, because they do not lower the prices on their older games. That's not cool, though. Yeah, and they re- they want you to pay way too much for Mario and stuff like that, so you really got to want it. You got to want it. And they know that you want it, so they'll get you. Well, the ho- hopefully, so, as Christmas comes closer, hopefully they will drop a little. They don't. Yeah, that's Nintendo, not- even if you go and buy a used Mario game, you're going to pay full price. Oh, that's not right. It's not right. Oh. And it's because how Nintendo would work things. But Harv's Island, which is a, a feature in Animal Crossing, which is normally you go and there's like a photo, photo studio kind of thing. And you can set up whatever you want. And you can bring whatever characters off your island and take fun photos. They're going to expand Harv's Island to where you can now pay to have. Because uh, from time to time on your island, these little different uh, kind of shopkeepers show up They're like traveling merchants. And you, but you never know when they're going to be there. There's no schedule. They just kind of like, oh, look, goody, the uh, the the person that sells the the art that I need from the museum is finally here. What they decided to do with Harv's Island is you can go and pay for them to have a storefront on Harv's Island, so you can go to Harv's Island and go shopping for all the items that you want when you're trying to complete different things in your home. So that's a really good. That's a that'll make things a lot easier to do stuff. Uh, they're working on the the camera function because a lot of games, you know, they're really big on. You know, they have photo mode and uh, on Animal Crossing New Horizons, you have you have a phone, basically, and it's got a camera on it and you're able to take snapshots of the screen. But they decided to expand that and you can activate your phone and put it in a first person mode, which to me, that would be fun. I could walk on my island first person. I might just go around with the camera out. But you can go now and walk over to your people on your island and they'll kind of smile and wave at your camera and you can take a picture that way, like first person view. And you can set it up as if you have it on a tripod and you can walk over and be in the photo that way. Oh, that's cute. So, yeah, a lot of fun things for anyone who likes really taking a lot of the, the pictures. Uh, they got some new items and new customization. They, uh, they, they Although uh, my wife has got a little worried that this is going to become a little too Farmville Stardew Valley. I was going to say, it sounds almost like a farm village. Except for they didn't they didn't do this before, but now they are. You can start planting vegetables. Oh, I see. So you can have a vegetable garden and you can actually then start making recipes and making food items, which you can put out on as a decoration in your kitchen or you can just eat it and you get like energy boosts for you know doing stuff. Uh, but it's still kind of fun. And a lot of new items in the um, Nook Miles that you earn, you can buy. They're going to expand that store. So there's a lot of new things up there. K.K. Slider. Everybody knows the little puppy dog has a who's the best selling artist of music and shows up on your island every Saturday once you've unlocked him to play a concert. He's going to have 12 new songs for him to play and for you to purchase to play have a playing on your island. Uh, 11 new gestures, 11 new hairstyles. In fact, there will be a hair stylist that will teach you new hairstyles for your characters over on Harv's Island. But also, they're going to have the Happy Home Paradise, which is a paid DLC. And this, at first I was like, I don't know. I mean, I might want it, but you basically you get a job. And you fly over to this other island and you're setting up vacation resorts. They wanted to have a way, I guess, for you to be able to interact with more different types of animal characters other than the ones that show up on your island. So you're going to build vacation homes and decorate them and have them play around with that. So there's more custom design stuff you can do for making vacation homes to make the perfect little place. But all these design things you get over there, you can bring back to your island and you can do some more customization on your own home. So it does expand. But I wasn't really thinking, you know, $25 for that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm worried about it. But here's the other kicker. You can either pay $25 for that or get it with the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack. So I've been, I've mentioned this before. They're gonna find because for a while, with the place the Switch Online, you can play some old Nintendo games and some old Super Nintendo games, and it's just like three ninety nine, and you can go online. It's cheaper than any other thing, and I thought it was fan flipping tastic. 
And oh, at first we did hear that they're going to have some Nintendo 64 games now available and Sega Genesis games that you can play on your Switch. That's cool. I thought it was all going to be that three ninety nine. Yeah. It's not. It's a, it's an extra cost. Uh, but I started looking at this, uh, and uh, let me go directly to the Nintendo side. I mean, I do have some stuff from CNET, uh, but let me look at more. Uh, Nintendo's official website did have some of the pricing. If, as soon as it pulls up here. Uh, so the expansion pack, uh, you can get, a fa- like, because right now, if, if with Heather and I, uh, we're paying three ninety nine each so we can play it online. Sure. That allows us to play together on Animal Crossing. And Mario Kart, if she ever decides to play her copy of Mario Kart, I bought her, but she... D- at first, it was nothing but Stardew Valley, and now it's nothing but Animal Crossing for her, so she'll never play Mario Kart with me. So, uh, But it allows us to play together online, and for anybody else, uh, you know, I, you can come play with me on Animal Crossing or Mario Kart. I'm trying to get a group together to play some Mario Kart. I'm working on that, too. Um, but so it, there's a family package that was like 20 30 bucks, something like that. Then it's up to eight people can play. And that would be a deal if you had that many people. But just two of us, we're just paying $8 total. That's no, no big deal. Now, the funny thing is, is with this uh, new expansion, with just two of us, if we buy the family pack for a year, it's cheaper than us doing it individually for a year. So now it's actually a good deal for us to do the family pack. So if you ever get a switch, I might even let you borrow our code. I've noticed some people that are like that. They let people borrow the code. It's like, okay, but with the expansion now, you're going to have to start chipping it. Yeah. <laughs> They're telling people, but you, know, you get probably never get a switch, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> well, you might, I don't know. You want to play some old super Nintendo games now that I enjoy or play but... some old Nintendo 64 games or Sega Genesis games. But here's the thing. If you get the subscription to the expansion pack, they're going to give you the animal crossing DLC thrown in. Yeah. That's the deal. That's where they get me. I'm like, oh, hey, all right. I will get that DLC. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what they do. They, so, they, they know what they're doing. Because that would be both Heather and I getting it for our copy of the game. So, Nintendo, you actually you got your hooks in me again. Uh, and plus, they, I, I've got some packages to set up for like the PS4 where I've got some old Sega Genesis games, but... Uh, oh, and I should have I should have left that up there because they're going to have a full list um, of all the different games. But there's a lot of games for Sega Genesis I don't have. Of course, I got some of the key ones that I wanted to have. Like uh, you remember we used to play Bonanza Brothers all oh, the time. Oh yeah, used to love that. But I, I'd love to have Desert Strike. Uh, we used to play that a lot. I remember that? Yeah. Uh, let me go look at some of these. Uh, they got a full list of the Sega Genesis games. Let me have a peek here. Peeky poo. Is that okay? Here we go. So we got Sonic Two, Streets of Rage Two, Echo the Dolphin, Strider, which is kind of cool. They've re-released Castlevania Bloodlines. Awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, a lot of standards. Uh, Contra Hardcore, which I already have because I got a Contra set. Gunstar Heroes, never played. Golden Axe is kind of standard. Uh, let's see, included games. Uh, they're repeating themselves a lot. Shining Force, Rice Star. A lot of this stuff is they've already released uh, on other things. But this is just the start of things. And there will be more stuff later. I mean, you hear the photo, they you know, Echo the Dolphin, uh, which the latest thing that I got on the PS4 didn't have Echo the Dolphin. I've never actually completed that one, but it... I remember that game. Yeah, yeah. it's it's complicated to figure out what you're doing. Uh, but a lot of neat things coming with the Sega Genesis, and of course, that's just the starting. They're going to keep expanding. They're going to have hundreds of Sega Genesis games eventually on there. Uh, let's see what they say about the Nintendo 64, what we're starting out with here. Uh, let's see. We've got... It'd be awesome if they put GoldenEye on there. Oh, that was great. That'd be game. so awesome. Right now, it looks like we've got Mario Kart 64, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Star Fox 64, Dr. Mario 64, Super Mario 64, Mario Tennis. I remember renting oh, Mario yeah. Tennis on the 64 and it took I, me for a while I got good at it, but then I got... I was intense. I wanted I to be. I never it. could get into it. I tried, but I'm terrible at regular tennis, let alone a video <laughs> game of it. Yeah, it takes a while to get going, but let's see. We got Yoshi's Story. built into it, and then... But, not in the in the game itself. I just could not get yeah. my timing right. Yeah, yeah. Once you but once you got your timing down, you yeah. start getting fun. Uh, something called Winback Covert Operations, never heard of, and Sin and Punishment, which might have been in Japan only. But those are just the starting games. I'm sure they're going to have more because they've shown imagery of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. But if they if they really want to make sure people subscribe. Get the rights to Golden Eye back for Rare. Yeah, because Rare, I think, started making stuff exclusively for for uh, Microsoft, maybe. Yeah, but if they can still get the rights to that Golden Eye game, was a, that and was, put it on the I Switch. I was thinking just the other day about Heck that yeah. game, Golden Eye, and there was something about that game. It didn't have to look identical to the way it used to. You could put the new graphics and all, but that game was just before its time. It was just so man. Yeah, there wasn't really you know you, you, there was you, you like had it. Doom. Yeah, you had Doom. Yeah, but that was the first time you had a group of your friends could get together on one console and play 
a, a death match against each it other. Was, like, other than you know, other than Doom, where you had to have be, multiple computers, but being opinion, able to play together on a console. That was that was revolutionary. In my opinion, at the time. that is what brought the Call of Duties, the yes. everything else. I was I was telling it my nephews about it. To it. Goldeneye. I was telling my nephews about it. How Goldeneye really changed everything for me as far as the gameplay. It was it was fun to attack each other. Mm-hmm. It was fun because it it was almost it was like finding sniping oh, locations. You got me. Yeah, it was like you got, <laughs> and I still do it. To this day, yes. there's something that's a sniping area. Well, you know, and uh, you the, are a camper. I am a camper, and, but part of it is and not trying to be a jerk. It's just that I'm not the best at the, at uh, going out there. Da, 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 da. Part of it is, is maybe it's just me, but when it comes to Call of Duty and all those other Rainbow Six, all that stuff, I I hate when I'm playing with someone and they go out there like, well, I want to die and I'll just come right back. I'm more of a realistic guy where I don't like to think of, well, I'm going to go out there and be killed so I can just come right back to life in this other area. I just don't like to think that way because if I was really, uh, especially when I'm in a place like, let's say, uh, D-Day, I think about these men who are really out there. And they weren't thinking, I'm just going to run out there in front of everyone. And, be and like most people don't just run out, but you go and you find your little bits of cover, but you also try to be faster on the draw. Yes. You, you, you want to be out there hunting the but bad I'm, guy. I'm speaking you know? of my nephews and people yeah. like that. They're, they're just like, I'm just going to run out there. They don't even, they don't even yeah. try to do any kind of realism. I'll try to be a little sneak out, but I'm hunting for you. Yeah, I, I'll go I'm out there. to get you. I'm not talking about when it's just one-on-one. But what I'm talking about in uh, when they're like to take it on the groups. Oh, when you got groups of it, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, you're gonna end up in an open combat. And you better find some cover. Yeah, they they just like they just want to kill the most they can, which is yeah. fine to each their own. But with me, I try to. I know I'm gonna die, but I try to take out as many as I can while I'm trying to find some cover. Yeah. And so I try to get down, but yeah. boom, get down, find your shots, and yeah. make them count. Make them and count. And try to be faster on the draw than the other guy. If that's you it. That's well, that's that's one of the things I get good at. You know, and people who play on PC that they they love for the PC because because they feel like they can aim faster with the mouse. And I can understand that there are some, mm-hmm. some games I've gotten used to PC like borderlands. I can't aim very well with a stick on that one, but uh, when I play it on the PC and it works great, but I call of duty, I do pretty good. good. It, yeah. I, the, the call of duty works really well on a console stick and I can aim really great on that one. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They, they made it well. They for did that. a good job for bringing that to console. I used to play a lot of the other ones too, but I just for, you know, not Fortnite. That was the wrong one. I, I can't think of the name of it right now, but anyway, uh, they they made they made a lot of good games, but Call of Duty is what I'm used to right now. Yeah, and uh, pretty good stuff. Yeah, they do a good job. Of course, in a way, they're recycling the same game over and over again. They but, do, they, but it's it's still good though. And they it's put so a lot good. of good stories. If you do play the stories, yeah, the stories are they really do interesting. a really great job. Yeah. They do. You know? Yeah, but you know where it's time for us to go? Well, where are we going? The trailer park. All right. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator. Give me that sugar. Come here. Oh, oh, get him all. Oh, get that game. Oh, oh, oh. The Neverland Trailer Park. Uh, now, uh, so Friday. Thank you, Maul. <laughs> <laughs> Friday. They were the the hashtag or the trending things on Twitter was saying that people were losing it over hearing Robert Patton's voice for Batman. Yeah, the, the the look on your face is like that's exactly what I thought when I heard it. Now the line they had given because they were saying, "Oh, we're gonna have a full trailer of DC Fandom on Saturday," and the line that they had was, you know, it's a, it's a good line. It's like that's just that's not just a signal; it's a warning. But it's okay. You hear my voice? I do not have a deep toned voice. And if you imagine me talking like this a little bit or trying to be a little gruff, that's kind of what he sounds like. Does not like talking like this. Yeah. Of course, that's not even used my full voice. That's just scratching, you know. But if you know, I'd have to really bring it down to be a Batman. You know, and it doesn't sound like Robert Pattinson is getting there. But anyways, let's have a listen to the full official trailer for The Batman. So as it pulls up. (laughs) Police! Hands up! Stay still! Is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. See, it's not bad, no. but it's not it's not losing my mind over it. Mm. 
and he's really skinny. First of all, but oh, oh, my God. God. this is a powder keg, and Rither's to match. I can take care of myself. If this continues, it won't be long before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only gonna get worse for you. Hear everything they say, ain't you? Maybe we're not so different. Who are you under there? I'm vengeance. All right, so that's going to be March 4th. That's the Batman. Robert Pattinson is the new... I mean, how many times have we rebooted Batman now? Uh, but here's the mistakes. I mean, it looks like it might be a good movie. Yeah, it, it, it might be. Here's here's my problem. March is interesting because so, I'm so used to it being like a June or July. Yeah, it should so be, a be a summer, summer movie. Yeah. Now it's, well, you know what we, they used to him, say though. about spring movies is the one that the studio doesn't have any confidence in. Yeah, but I don't necessarily think so, that's the case here. Well, here, here's the mistakes I'm seeing. One of the things that kind of bogged down some of the earlier Batman movies is you started packing in too many villains. Mm. And here's what we've got the Penguin. Now, granted, Colin Farrell is a tremendous actor yeah. and he you can't even recognize him. Yeah, he did a good, it's they did a good job. It's amazing what they did with him. You've got a Catwoman. Mm. Uh, I'm not familiar with that actress. No, they did. And, but, and you've also either. got a Riddler, which we're not seeing him really, you know, because I, I guess they didn't want him wearing question marks or anything. And they ha- I don't think they've even revealed the actor. They've not even shown the face of the I've Riddler. I've seen who it is, but I don't know him. I don't know that guy. Yeah. But so you've got three villains in there. There's more than that, though. Are there going to be more? Yeah, but what they're going to, but what they're doing, I say that. What I think they're doing is they're building up for other films. Yeah. So I, some of these characters you know, may have small parts, like the penguin might not have a big well, part. Catwoman's Matt, probably a love Matt interest. McConaughey is going to be the is Two Face, great actor. Ooh, now that I can get into. That, now, but if he I doesn't say, show up as Two Face, he's not a villain in this one. Yeah, exactly. So, what, I, what I say is it could be a build up. So when I say yeah. he's Two Face, even if he's Two Face, Harvey Dent, and, or and even if he is Two Face, <laughs> maybe he's Two Face for. 10 minutes and yeah. he's going to be built up to put it in another film. So that's why I'm not trying to throw much into yeah. it yet. Yeah. But uh, Robert Pattinson does not have, I mean, I kind of got used to, I mean, Christian Bale was not a, he's not a big man. I mean, he's no. in, in shape and I'm sure Robert, yeah. Robert Pattinson got in some pretty good oh, shape, yeah, point, but man. in the bat suit, he looks kind of skinny. His neck looks kind of skinny. I do love looking at the mask that it has. It almost looks like a leather I on think the it's cowl a, that's like stitched together. It looks, it looks kind of, that looks neat up close. From what I've seen, and I don't know, I don't want to, jump to conclusions but I think this is supposed to be a year one type thing where he's and it yeah the, it's supposed to be changing we got a Batman origin again isn't that what we wanted it, but yeah. I think that uh, it's supposed to be like that because uh, and I believe if I'm not mistaken that the battering is the symbol that he's wearing well that's kind of what he's you know and uh, so <laughs> what it looks like but it could be good we it, don't know it could yet. be a good movie here, here's the other mistake what is the when so you ask what's cool about Batman what is the first thing everybody says I don't know because there's so many things really? there once people say he doesn't have any powers. Yeah, he's an order. I could become Batman. Yeah, so he's not invincible. And part of what makes him cool is that he's not invincible. Yeah, and he might have to tug, dodge some bullets. Animated series, he dodged bullets. Batman, the Arkham games, you have some armor, and he could take a couple shots. But if you get shot too many times, oh, what, you're what out. you're saying is that he has no superpowers. So he's got he's, no superpowers. Yeah, he's not Superman. And in the '89 Batman, if he took a bullet, he got knocked down. Yeah. We see a shot here. He's walking down a hallway. Guys have fully automatic machine guns blasting away on him. And it's just binging off like he's Iron Man. 
Now, Iron Man has thick armor, and in order to move, he's got, you know, stuff, gyros, whatever, that that enables him to move and enhances his strength. If Batman was wearing armor capable enough of him just to be able to walk down the hall and not feel multiple bullets, he's going to be too heavy to move. It is stupid. It is ridiculous. Like, he needs to have that humanity to where he needs to, like... I don't know. Yet, get around the bullets it, and like, so. or they, or they don't see him and not have him. I'm walking straight up. I don't care. You're shooting me. He needs to be like, Oh, you thought I was there and you fired over there. You miss me. Cause I'm now over here behind you. Well, you know, see, that's what makes Batman until cool. Until I see the film, I'm not going to get upset about it. Except for that, that footage right in there. That, that may I not saw even, that and I was like, you guys don't get it. This that is may Batman. Not be real. That may be a dream. That may not be. You don't know yet till you see it. So. Except for those other shots where you see no, him taking, just, glancing all kinds just, of bullets. There's other footage too. Just be calm. We, we wait till we see it. <laughs> I have not had faith in this movie since they announced it. Just Especially when they showed the image of the Batmobile. I'm not a keen on the Batmobile. It just looks like the average sports car. Maybe. And just, really, it's just be calm. The design of the Batmobile is bad. The suit doesn't look good. But the story, it, it looks interesting. Yeah. Otherwise, and it might be an interesting movie. But there's so much that it seems they got wrong with this. But just be calm. I mean, they they. Many people say the same thing about I'm, Michael Keaton. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of them rebooting Batman. I am tired of rebooting but Batman. Do you have a, as far as the whisper voice, Michael Keaton's the first one did that. Michael Keaton had gave it a great voice. He sounded very cool. As Batman. And I didn't like what Christian Bale did, but at least Christian Bale was trying to do something. And but it became a kind of a joke with him by the second he movie. He went overboard. He yeah. went, oh, yeah, swear to me. I mean, it worked yeah. okay in Batman Begins, but by Dark Knight, when he, your stance against injustice, yeah. <laughs> it got so bad to where people were openly mocking him for yeah. it. Um, but it looks like I probably might have fun with it, but there's stuff I see in this trailer and I'm like, ugh, ugh. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad to me. But then again, like I said, I'm staying calm because until I see it, I've had to learn just be yeah. calm. But I'm a Marvel guy, and to me, DC is too little too late. And we're going to talk about that here with some other movies. But this is Suicide Squad All Kill the Justice the League. Worst of the worst of the Not worst. a movie, it's a game. Oh. Still, you're good at what you do. Now, I'm not a huge Suicide Squad fan, but anyways. Far from good. Welcome. This could be funny. But they want so bad for this to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I'll take over but I have faith in Rocksteady. They make great games. Let me take a look at you. A muscle head. A nut job. Something that offends my eyes. And a homeless person. You're perfect. Just checking. We're all seeing that thing, right? This has one-way ticket written all over it. Oh, it's one. What the hell have you sent us into? It's a bloody war zone out here. Eyes up, people. Congratulations, Task Force Act. You're the first assets to make it into Metropolis alive. I was just about to do that. Task Force X. Your new mission is to kill the Justice League. Now, see, this is what has me interested. What happened to the Justice League where they're a threat? Yeah. Well, that woman is always a villain. You know, so... I have a feeling this movie's going to copyright strike me, so I'm going to cut this off right about here. Really, they're just showing a lot of cinematics. They're not showing any of the gameplay footage, so I don't know how the game's going to play. I don't know. But what gets me interested is... I figure that you've got to have, and I love if they have choices, like with Justice League members, do you kill the member of the Justice League or do you find a way to cure them? And if you have the choice and it has consequences later in the story of the game, that would be so good. Yeah. Of course, now me, I'm such a goody goody. I'm going to save the Justice League. Me I'm too. not killing Superman. Yeah. No way, dude. My, my problem is, this is just me personally, because I'm also what you want to call goody goody or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, my, okay. My, my problem is um, for the generations now, it's better to be a villain for them. Yeah. Uh, People, lot, I enjoy villains, but I enjoy kicking their butts. It, 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 I was going to say, it's, <laughs> I enjoy the villain characters. Riddler, uh, Joker, Two-Face, all the, uh, a lot of the Marvel villains, too. It's good to have good villains. But you know what I mean? To have fun villains and yeah. all that. But and this goes even to a biblical stance. You don't want to praise villainous behavior. Right. And to just put it easy that way. Uh, from from the book of Isaiah, but you, you just don't want to like, do that. Like the original parts of the Caribbean ride was kind of mo- it's mockish and being funny yeah. about 
But the pirates are supposed to be doing you bad even, things. You can even make a yeah. film, and this is the truth, you can even make a film where you understand the villains. I don't mind that. Yeah. I can understand the of Joker. what drives were, somebody to go that yeah. Oh, that Joker movie was so intense. Oh, yeah, it was. I can even understand it, and I can even say, I feel for them. Yeah. But let's not justify what a v- villain is supposed to be doing. Like, well, I understand them, so let's just go ahead and make it to where they're the good guy yeah. and the hero's the bad guy. Because they're, they're not, I'm not the good saying guy. everyone's doing that. But, but a lot of the films are kind of. This, appears to be leaning that way or at least the kid because let's be honest with kids they don't know everything I mean, they're, they're, that's why they're children they're learning yeah. yeah but if if a film seems to be appearing to be saying that that's something that i don't our game i don't go for that all the way yeah. i'm not saying that they're bad i'm saying that there's things that i wish they would do just a little different that but yeah. that's just my yeah. opinion but yeah if you're if you're doing the wrong things for the right reasons you're still doing the wrong things that's it so that's right. That's so you're that's still, the only thing I ever said. So, uh, but it Punisher. is interesting. Is uh, I think <laughs> I like it, Punisher, but I can I can like when, yeah, he's, when still, they, he's still doing the wrong thing for the right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why he came into the Spider-Man villain. But yeah, exactly. I would like to see an exploration of when they have a character. I would love to see them have a, a villain that the villain doesn't realize they're the villain. That's it. That would be interesting and because that that. that it's like they say you're the villain in somebody's story. They like, they like yeah. to say that. I don't think I'm the villain in anybody's story because I'm a nice person. But, but somebody, you know. But I would be interested to see somebody who's they believe in. They're just doing their cause and they don't realize yeah. the damage they're doing. And maybe at the end you can even have a redemption story for that. They villain. have. They have in the new uh, Suicide Squad. John, yeah, I, I wasn't sure I wanted to watch it. it, it, it there, there's a lot of stuff I don't like about it, but John Cena's character, I can't remember the guy's name The right Peacemaker. Now. Peacemaker. Which, which I didn't grab his trailer because he's getting a series, but I'm, yeah, not, I'm not interested, and I, but, so I skipped but he, it. I got to say, I kind of like that he, in a way, thinks he's a good guy, even though he goes around things the wrong way. I like that, in a way, he's kind of like a punisher, in a sense, that he believes he's doing the right thing. Even though he's not going about it the right way, yeah. but he thinks he's doing the right thing, and I kind of like that. that yeah, and then we kind of that's that's an interesting character when he's like, "I'm not evil. I'm trying to do this." And I gotta say, John Cena is the perfect cho- choice. Yeah, he, I don't re- like he re- so well, much, yeah, I know yeah, you don't, but yeah. he he himself in the role that he for did, that is role, a, I think he's, he's, he's perfect good cast. because yeah. he's really great for that. He's perfect choice because he's that the got that goody guy way that good guy way and yet at the same time he can be a punk in the movies i mean he can be mm-hmm. kind of overboard on ornery we'll say ornery yeah you know and so he's good for that he really is yeah and i think one of the good villains that i don't think they realized they were the bad guy was in black panther with the uh, um yes uh, i forgot What's the actor's his name? name he played oh. uh he's he on was, the rocky he's, he's, movies uh and, yeah he plays creed creed yes uh, he's a um he's a, such a good actor oh, but I, forgot, I forgot the villain's name the villain itself. Yeah, uh, he's a great actor. But he, he seems so justified, but he was just so... The problem with him is he was had so much anger that he couldn't he let went, go of. Yeah, he went overboard. He went too far. Too far. But he, line, and that's the thing. I think it. that's why he kills Claw. And that, well, Sorry, spoilers if you haven't seen Black yeah. Panther. Well, the reason why he, he, he killed him is because he realized, all right, this is a bad guy. So Yeah, he jumped He jumped that line. But he, he crossed the line too far. But yeah. I don't think he realized it. But I like that he almost has a redemption when he gets to see... You know, sunrise over Wakanda because, like, you know, this this is what you should have aimed and strove for. He, you know, it almost reminds me. I don't want to get caught up on it because we got a lot to yeah, cover. He almost reminds, it almost reminds me of a scene from Lion King where he it was, was, he was like yeah. Scar. He, yeah. he just, but instead, of, except for just, Scar was flat and evil. Oh, flat out. He did, <laughs> Scar just jumped the line, didn't give yeah, a crud. But yeah. this guy, he but just he, went a little Scar far. did it almost in the way you do in the, the real jungle, except for he didn't do the kill himself. Yeah, that's right. So very. Oh, but this I'm kind of excited for because if you've not seen this. See if you recognize this voice once it starts. Greetings, DC fans. Okay, and this is not what I expected. Ezra Miller here, live from the set of The Flash. It looks like this. This is not the video I was looking We're for. We're very excited to show you the movie. Let me skip uh, ahead here. I recognize the music right away. I was like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, that's Ezra Miller. All right, Ezra Miller. I, you know, him as a Flash is, is not too bad. I mean, I, I'm not, I actually kind of like Grant Gustin better. But yeah. anyways, here's the trailer. And the music should sound familiar too, buddy. Tell me something. And there's the voice. You can go anywhere you want, right? Any timeline. Any universe. Why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? You change the future. And you change the past. (laughs) 
and it's this last shot here. You see the 89 Batman yeah. ears. I can't wait to see that. So, I mean, this is cool, and it's Michael Keaton. Yes, yeah, it's valid. Michael Keaton, and you get to see the inside of Wayne Manor the way you remember from 89. And I love that the fact, okay, so you, at this point you see a tarp over a car, and you pull it away, and they don't show it, but you can tell from the shape of the tarp, Whoa. that's the 89 Batmobile. So that's what got me interested, like, because they're doing Flashpoint. Wait, Basically, wait, they're wait, doing Flashpoint. What's, what's good about that is you oh. can keep certain things, uh, for instance, the Aquaman and the Wonder Woman, we knew they were going to keep them. from the, Yeah, from, well, but they can you, multiverse it. You can multiverse it. You can also keep those things, and that stuff stays. And yet, you can keep Cyborg if you want. You keep those things, and yet you can change the things that people don't like. I'm sorry, Affleck fans. He's yeah. come back for this, but they're not keeping that. Now people keep saying, "Oh, we're going to keep that." Too. No, that, they already know they're not. And if you like Schneider versus okay, those of you who thought that the Snyder cut of the Justice League was the greatest thing ever, when okay, I personally do not. But that's just my opinion. Uh, but I'm not a Schneider fan. But that doesn't mean he's a bad guy. And I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. I'm so sorry but, about that. Yeah, but all that being said, all that being said, I'm looking very much forward to seeing what they will do. Yeah. And mostly, and this is a selfish comment, I adore Michael Keaton as Batman. Yes, I'm excited and for this. And by the way, I'm still a fan um, of Batman forever. Not so much yeah. the, the other one. But as far as this goes, I am so looking forward to it. And I'm now reading the comic books of the uh, ones that they're doing. I need doing. to get a copy and of those. I, I will at least let you borrow them, yeah. if nothing else. Oh, but God, that being said, uh, maybe we'll get you a copy. But yeah. that being said, I cannot wait to see what they're going to yes. do with these films. Because it'll be yes. great to see Keaton in that mask again. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. It's like that little 12-year-old when the first movie came out. Was 12 yes. years old. I'm so excited, folks. I actually have a great big cardboard michael keaton right yes, you do. on my wall man yes you do i'm excited <laughs> yes the only thing i will say about this is i feel a little bad for them because them getting their multiverse kind of thing connecting together it's gonna seem like oh isn't that what marvel already did well it's, yes, gonna be, it's a little unfair but, but it's flash, a little unfair flash did do it first yeah so we know that that's the thing and DC had a Justice League before there was an Avengers. Uh -huh. DC in the comics was first in all this, but they, for some reason, never thought to put it together in a, in a cinematic universe. In their, in their defense. They should have been doing this all along. Well, they they had Warner Brothers in their, in their defense. Pocket. Warner Brothers, they're See, cowards. They should have done it. They're cowards. They really are. Now, I will say, in their defense, they didn't, uh, uh, they had no idea it would work. Uh, yeah, and the, Marvel the, proved that it works. It, yeah, well, <laughs> Disney had the more of the money than yeah. Warner Brothers. It well, even does. before Disney stepped in, you had Marvel Studios. Marvel was doing it, and Disney, when they jumped on board and bought it, they because they believed in the product. And Disney, yeah. Disney had the money to make sure it happened. Disney had the intelligence and in, uh, all the people behind it to know yeah. how to do things that other people just yeah. didn't. Well, they just let a lot of the Marvel people that people that were put together. Well, what I mean is, thing, they, they knew. I'm talking about marketing and all that. Oh yeah, Disney can market with the best of them. But basically. You might not, they might have something you've never heard of. I mean, we could just make it up on the on the dot here. You know, October uh, Squad or whatever, and and, <laughs> okay. and you know the Pumpkin Man and this Pumpkin that. Head and, and, and people all of a sudden Candy Girl, they, yeah, they 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 market like crazy, and they're, and all of a sudden you have people. Oh, I've always loved them. There is no them. It's never been around for. And people suddenly have always loved them. I've always been behind them, and I've known them since. Okay, it's never been around, but now all of a sudden people are interested. They're invested because they 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 every time they you turn on a, a TV show, it's commercial. Every time you pick up a cereal box, it's there. It's okay. It may cost a million or two million or whatever to uh, commercial it, maybe more, probably a lot more. But they're going to make billions back. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it goes. Now here's the thing, though. We've kids Marvels. I mean, we got Spider Man movies really diving into that multiverse hardcore, oh. bringing back some old villains. So that, it, nice, it almost though. seems like the Flash is a little copycat dagging, diving into the the eighty nine Batman. But here's what I want to see with the multiverse. Now we know. Disney and Warner Brothers once had some really good conversations. And as long as Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny had the same amount of lines and shared the same amount of screen time, they could share a screen together in Roger Rabbit. I doubt it'll happen, but that would be now, neat. what if a multiverse? Did you see where I'm going with oh, this? I would love Disney, it. Marvel Superman, Studios, Warner Spider -Man, Brothers. Remember that? Yes. Yes. A multiverse where DC and Marvel can come together and we get a Justice League Avengers crossover movie. Oh, there was there was a, a comic book that I adored in the se late seventies, and, oh. and uh, that was whenever Superman and Spider Man met. And by the way, yeah. in that comic book, you had Hulk. And I have Wonder a giant Woman. size version of this, their mm. second meeting. Oh yeah, 
Oh, yes. Hulk and Wonder Woman, man, too. Oh, (laughs) yes. So, I mean, this is stuff that happens in the comics. If two comic book companies can get this together, and we know that Warner Brothers and Disney can compromise and find a way for Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny to be together, can they sit down in that chair and realize, do you know how much money we can make? It would be awesome. Do you know a Captain America Batman movie? Avengers and Justice League. (laughs) I doubt it would happen, but that would be, that's a nice dream. Because we got a multiverse, so these multiverses can cross over. Remember the amalgam? Oh. <laughs> I love that. That was great. Just the, just think of the potential if they ever do this. But anyways, we better get moving because we're supposed to be talking Halloween stuff. Now, I actually haven't watched this trailer, but I've been hearing about it. League of Super League Pets. Of Super Pets. Oh, thank I you. I love it. Perfect. Hey! <laughs> Pets. Plural. You ever heard of a league with one dude in it? I have it. Well, they say I'm in a league of my own. Oh, you're in a league of your own, all right. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody as messed up as you. I recognize Next those voices. Summer, Dwayne Johnson as Crypto. Awesome. Kevin Hart as Ace. Awesome. I'm not a fan of Kevin Hart. Oh, he's nice, though. How much did you have to drink? <laughs> John Krasinski, Diego Luna. I've seen some names. Global old trailer launch is coming uh, in November. May May 20th is when that movie comes out. That now, fun. did you ever watch some of that? Uh, they had a, a little cartoon. It was Crypto the Super Dog. Yeah, and they had it. his little friends. They had a bat dog and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Ace the Bat and, and, and Yeah. Uh, so, and it was cute. So yeah, I loved it. I'm kind of looking forward to this because this could be a lot of fun. I love the voices. That'd yeah. be fun. But of course, they had to get The Rock in there. Oh, The Rock is fun, you know. Yes, he's, indeed. He's a good guy. Which, by the way, okay, I want to. I'm going to talk about Black Adam, but I, 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 there's really not any audio to play because if you hear what what The Rock was saying, he cussed. Uh, so I'm not going to use it. And then they had audio uh, for a teaser, but there really isn't any dialogue and no, you know, without a context. But they showed uh, like a group of kind of explorers kind of going into this little ruin, and uh, somebody goes and reads some runes on the ground and says Shazam, and Black Adam appears awesome. and kills a guy. I mean, he sort of grabs one of these guys, picks him up, and just, turns him to ash. So Black Adam is coming soon. It's going to be awesome. And I cannot wait until we have that Black Adam versus Team Shazam. That'd be great. Which, speaking of Shazam, there's another game. I'm going to jump back to it. But because I'm talking about Shazam, Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. We don't really have a real teaser. They were more talking. Oh, this might have been just showing footage. I don't, don't know what footage I grabbed. This is so dark. Probably would have been a good idea to have like one light on. Okay, it's repeating or something now. This is not the footage I'm meant to grab. It's gonna, is it repeating? Seriously? Why is it so dark? Probably would have been a good idea to have like one light on. I grabbed them from the wrong source. Okay, but I was wanting to grab where they were talking about filming it and what's going on with this movie, but I can just share that with you because, of course, Zachary Levi is back. Have you, have you seen these new costumes? No. Because the, the one thing with the Shazam costume is it looked like it was this extra thick bulk that was yeah. on him. He looked like he was wearing too much. Yeah, I thought they've, so. They've trimmed those down, good. make them look good. They, so they got, they've upgraded the suits, and, of course, the entire family is back. Good. Uh, we've also got Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren, and good. they're playing... I guess some Greek goddesses. Good. And they're bringing some Greek monsters into town to fight with the family. Don't know what they're mad about, but it's Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. That'll be great. Now, what I also want to see is, and I don't remember what the character's name is, but that little evil caterpillar that we got to see a little bit in Shazam. Oh, good. Because he's an important character in the comics, apparently. I I, I need to get more of the comics because the comics were good. I used to read them like when I was a teenager, I came across is that remember we used to go to Packer at? Yes. I, I came across a whole bunch of on sale for like, I think he was, he was sold them to me for like 50 cents at the time. They were like the old wow. ones. And they gave me, got me some of the new ones too. And I read a whole bunch and they were fun. They may have a couple of them still. But anyway, there was a lot of fun. And I like that they're doing Black Adam the way they're doing it because yeah, they're going to have a movie a or so. And, build him up. and they're going to build him up, which is good. Because The Rock is not a small actor. <laughs> no and I'm kidding. not talking in a physical sense. You've got that too. He's, he's a blockbuster guy now. He's, he's yeah. the new Will Smith. Oh, he is. He's great. He's mm-hmm. really great. I love him. And um, I think they're going to do this correctly. Yeah. So I can't wait and to see not, this. 
Shazam 2, I think, is not due for until like 2023. I mean, they're, they're working on it. Sort of like Aquaman is currently in production, Aquaman 2. Good. Looking forward to that as well. And he's not your regular villain because he's a he's one who thinks he's a good guy. Right. And he, he's egotistical as heck. Yes, which he is. I'm not saying that about actual. But you got that level of power. I'm not saying that about Rock. But I'm saying The Rock's character back in the he, day. Oh, yeah. He, can, he was egotistical. When he, oh, when he played a bad, when he was a heel wrestler. Oh, he was a real but he, Oh, he was a level. He was charismatic as oh, a heel. Oh, he was charismatic as heck. Yeah. But he was a heel. I mean, a yeah, jerk. He was. he was. a jerk. The guy himself. Yeah, I'm not talking about that guy, but yeah, that but character. Yeah, as a wrestler, that's yeah, what you do character. when you're a heel. You got to be the jerk. He was a punk. You know, he yeah, was. Yeah, but he was so funny you know, as a he was, jerk. He was, he was, well, I always say this about the, the heel wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, Hate to like them, and you love you you, you, you love, love to hate, hate them, and you, you hate to love them. Yeah, yeah, and especially a good heel like Damian Sandow, Damian man, Sandow back in the day. So yeah, the ones that Andy you could Biasi. entertain you. Oh yes, yeah, there's been some great wrestling yeah. heels. So yeah, looking forward to him as Black Adam. Yeah, looking forward to see what they do when they cross him over That'll with Shazam. Fun. It'll be fun. It'll be great. All right, I got another game trailer. Gotham Knights, which we know this has been coming for a while. Official Court of Owls. Story trailer. Well, Court of Owls, I guess, is maybe part of Gotham Knights. Now, the main premise of what we know about Gotham Knights is they've done in a world where Batman is dead and Christian Gordon apparently is dead. Oh. So this is a different world. This is Nightwing. It's Robin. It's Batgirl. And uh, the Red Hood trying to trying to save Gotham in their own way. Uh, there's not a lot of dialogue in this, but let me go ahead and play some of it. Uh, but this is not set in the Arkhamverse because you'll notice the Penguin's voice is entirely different. Yeah. But you still haven't finished the Arkham games. You need no, to finish that. man. Jim Gordon. They thought they had a handle on this city. That's the Penguin's voice right there. They never did. Sounds like it's going to look for that new movie. Though. You don't stand a chance. Because they're always watching. Always listening. Pulling everybody's strings. Mine. Yours. But no one talks about them. Not a whispered word is said. The Court of Owls is a myth. <laughs> they're listening. Now, I don't think there's really much more dialogue in this. It's a lot of action shots, a lot of cinematics. They don't really show much of the gameplay there, so I'm going to end there right, right there. Now, I'm not that familiar with the Court of Owls. That's been a, a fairly recent, within the last, I think, five years uh, concept they've had uh, where the Court of Owls is like this underground evil conspiracy group that's just controlling everything in Gotham. So this will be exciting to see them brought forth in a game. So looking forward to see what comes through with that. Uh, but I've also, well, I've got, there's a little bit of Aquaman too, but uh, really they're just talking about they're making it. Uh, so other things that though, I did learn from the, the fandom, we've got a Catwoman animated movie that looks very fun in style coming. Very brilliant because when they were bringing out Batman Returns, this is years ago, 1992, I was just 15 when it came out. And, um, that I remember, a long time ago. oh yeah, I mean, 92. 92. But I think whenever they started bringing out the comic books, and all, they were very brilliant. Because what they would do is they would bring out a, a comic. They did the same thing in 95 and all for uh, Riddler and, and Two-Face and all. They would bring out comic book series and all, uh, kind of building up the characters. And they did that for Penguin. They did it for two for uh, Catwoman. They'd want you to know about these characters that they were letting you know about before the film. And it sounds to me like they're doing that same thing here for these uh, characters before the movies come out. Now, what they have, they didn't have then. They get they get to bring out these movies, these films. They didn't have that then. And so that's very very wise, I think. Uh, but one thing that they did do, they had, and I, I'll have to give credit to this, uh, Paul Dini, love you, uh, but you had Batman the Animated Series, so right after, they didn't have that for the first film, so right after, Batman Returns. We're talking just months after you had Batman the animated series, yeah. which is why the <clears throat> Penguin uh, got to have that look. That yeah, he, he had the, the flippers, but yet, and he had the nose and the hair. Yeah, but yet 
that what they did that was so much wiser, and I think even the film, even though I like Batman Returns, but I think it was smart that he was still kind of more uh, refined. Yeah, he was more of the comic book penguin. Yes. And he yeah, just he looked, looked a little like, like Danny yeah, Vito. Which was cool. Yeah. I thought they did a good job with that. Yeah. But we've got a, some bunch of animated movies. So we have that Catwoman. Awesome. And she's going to be teaming up with Batwoman. Oh, that'd be interesting. So uh, we've also got uh, Super Sons, I think they're calling it. We've got mm. Damian Wayne as, or, as Robin. Cool. With, uh, uh, which the, the now controversial, I suppose, uh, John Kent. John Kent, yeah. Jonathan uh, Kent, yeah. Yeah. No, not Jonathan, John. Oh, John. You know, Jonathan Kent is dead. This is his oh, name yes, for him. Yes. He probably, his full name is probably Jonathan, but he probably. goes by John. Yeah, but you have say, John Kent, which is Clark's Kent, yeah, son. Kent, yeah. Lewis and Clark's son. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have an animated feature. But, you know, the DC animated universe is, I mean, it's it's not a connected universe, but those animated movies are, are really good. They do a good job. Yeah. They really do a good job of those. So when they announce some new animated stuff, I got to say, check it out. And if you have yeah. HBO Max, you got to access to a lot yeah. of them. And they've even got the long Halloween available for you now. Oh, which is fun. Which is, yeah, it's, I, I want to reread the long Halloween because I think they did change a few change things. a lot. Um, I, I must say, but I did enjoy it. Not disrespect to the artist of the comic book, not my style of art, a little too. And I'm not, I, I like it. That's a uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim sale as writers. I and like, they also did that Spider-Man blue, which I really enjoy. I like they did. A, I think they did a better job in the uh, films because that would be hard to animate. Yeah. So they did a good job at making it similar, but different. Yeah. And yet, a little smoother, so which that, I thought was that good. Superman All Stars. How they kind of got some of the style of the artwork of that special comic, but yeah. then they animated the, it, which was very smart. Yeah. They try to do that. And I like how they they do it with a, <clears throat> with a bit of respect. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, but we need to move on because sure. this is a Halloween episode. Sure. And you know what? We've got a movie to review. Mom, that's not the right button. <laughs> Fuzzball. Okay, that's not the right button either. <laughs> <laughs> See the jokes on you because I still don't have a button for movie reviews. <laughs> I need I need to make a movie review thing. I keep talking about it every time, but I never do it. So that's why I was actually playing around with the buttons. <laughs> so, I was actually review. playing, but we actually have a movie to review. But I mean, this is not a movie you're going to go out and see in theaters, but you can purchase it if you have a Vudu or a digital account. Uh, and apparently, there's a Blu-ray if you can you can buy online. But I bought it. Uh, I think nine ninety nine for a digital copy. Mad Monster Party. This is a Rankin Bass. They made Halloween movies. And they've done, uh, when I was looking this up, there are two because there's Mad Mad Monsters. And I think that's the only two. And you were looking that up. And uh, Mad Mad Monsters was made in 1972. Mad Monster Party was 1967. So they are separate stories entirely. Yes. Um, but they're kind of in with the whole madness, uh, I guess. But Mad uh, Mad Mad Monsters was done. If you've if you've ever seen Rankin Bass when they do their two D animation at the at that time, yeah. how it looked, it's very much stylized like that. Yes. Very different from what they did when they started doing Thundercats later. But uh, sure. the Mad Monster Party is good old fashioned stop motion puppets. Stop mo- I was gonna say I didn't think about it the other day when we were watching it, but I thought about it since then. I think I don't remember if it was yesterday or what. I recognized those. I almost said toys. I guess they are in a way dolls, you know. But I suddenly realized that I, they looked very familiar to me, and I had seen it before, but it'd been a while. Later on, maybe a couple of years later, say 72, 73, 74, whatever year it was made, in uh, Peter Cottontail, mm. that whenever he he goes back in time or whatever it is to the calendar or whatever, of course, it really doesn't make sense because mm. it's supposed to be that they goes back, but in reality, he, they already know what's going on. It doesn't make any sense if you think about it. But uh, when they go through with some of those same things like the Dracula, either it's his different one that looks identical or they use the exact same, probably did use the same ones, yeah. same doll, same ghost, same whatever. Could have been. It, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think they used the Phyllis Diller one. But they used... Uh, oh. Well, what? yeah, because that Phyllis Diller, that was definitely a Phyllis Diller puppet. Yeah. I mean, it looked like it. But they Rankin Bass was so good about that, about making puppets that look like their, their well, special yeah, guests. Because in that Peter Cocktail one, you have Danny Kaye. That's yeah, Danny Kaye. That's Danny Kaye. There's Kay. no doubt that that's Danny yes. Kaye. Yes. But anyway... They're so good at that. They had, uh, in that, you have a lot of the same haunted characters. Yeah. Even though I don't think that they're supposed to be the those characters. But it is. It's Dracula. It's yeah. ghosts. It's, so they're used and again. I do wonder, you know, looking at this picture of Boris Karloff, I think they did a good job with Boris Karloff oh, yeah. plays Baron Boris von Frankenstein. They they kind of made it look like Boris it's Karloff him. too. It's him. It is. It, yeah, I mean, there's no other person who could sound like I mean it's it's yeah. they, they get a great and job. Though, I don't believe they actually because I think it's an impersonation of Peter Lorre. They sure. did make of course that puppet that looked like Peter Lorre. Yeah. I mean it's I, it would be as if you hired someone from Saturday Night Live to do their best. It, it's it, it's it's kind of like when you had um oh I can't even think of his name right now, 
But when you had someone who tried to sound like Frank Sinatra and they did their very, very best and they dressed like and put on head, hair, it, I mean, it's so close. It'd be close, but it wouldn't be quite the same. No, no. But this was a story by Arthur Rankin Jr., as most of them were. Uh, sure. The screenplay was written by Len Korob, uh, Korobkin and Harvey Kurtzman, of course, directed by Jules Bast. Uh, Bast. I mean, Bast. <laughs> you got Boris Karloff in there. As, well, as we said, Baron Boris, Ron Frankenstein. Alan Swift is, oh my goodness, Felix Fr- Flanken, Yetch. Dracula. Yes. Yeah, Yetch was the guy that was the Peter Lorre. You know. yeah, uh, Invisible Man, which I love how they did the Invisible Man. Oh, that was yeah. great. How they managed to do that as a puppet. Do you, do you remember? Because oh. it was great animation. It was brilliant. I, you didn't see, and on that one, I, sometimes you see those, uh, I guess, fishing wire or whatever, the string. Yeah. You don't see any but string you, or anything. What, and what, it's not like they had a computer to remove it. I love it. Not that I want to ruin it. Because he'd be it. like a pair of glasses and a hat walking, bouncing around like he's walking. I, oh. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but I got to say, my favorite part of the whole thing was when they threw a pot. Oh, and, and, and it's, you, you see this great big nose, and he goes, "Oh, you're ugly. Uh, no wonder you're invisible. Yeah. Yes, you're ugly. Yeah. No wonder you're invisible. That was hilarious. Yes, uh, but he's also Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Cool, uh, Chef Machiavelli, which that was a funny name. Yes, and I, I love the Doctor Jekyll Mister Hyde. Yes, that was so much fun. Transition. Uh, he was the voice of Captain, First Mate, Mister Cronkite, Mailman, Boy. and the Monster, also known as Fang. What in this? Why did they just to have who he was it would have gone quicker yeah he's pretty much most of the voice except for Gail Garnett is Francesca yes which I'm I'm, I'm she's had to have been an inspiration for Jessica Rabbit it was so close it, her her features were so out of proportion that I don't know how the puppet stood up yeah it, that had to be strange <laughs> or something was, then we mentioned Phyllis Diller and she's just known as the monster's mate she was great uh, because she's Phyllis Diller she's we great we love Phyllis Diller and then Ethel Enos was the title song singer now who did the now maybe you already mentioned it I just didn't remember his name hmm. who was the guy who did the uh, the main character the um, I can't think of his name the nephew or whatever Alan Swift. If Alan it wasn't Swift. one of these other actors, it's Alan Swift. That guy was amazing. He was, he was sounding. He was Felix Flanken. Felix Flanken was the name of him. He was basically sounding like a Jimmy Stewart impersonation. Yes, <laughs> he was a Jimmy Stewart completely ripped off. Oh uh, well, well, it's kind of like a on the Hanna Barbera cartoons. You had um, you know, you know, in reality, we're being serious here. They yeah. did these voices that were to sound like celebrities yeah. in a sense. You, I mean. To be truthful, and people probably wouldn't recognize this now, but I mean, we even have a Huckleberry Hound to sound like Andy Griffith the, the, yes. during the comedian days, and you yeah. had just that's just how they did. Or you even had um, oh, I can't remember the name of the the, the daddy dog and whatever the uh, daggy uh, algy doggy and doggy daggy doggy daddy. daddy. Yeah, and that was to to sound like that. Uh, oh, what's his uh, name? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, cha, 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 cha. Jimmy Durant, uh, son of mine. Yeah, oh boy, oh boy, oh son of mine. Oh father, you know you had yeah. those. That was definitely it was great. Yeah, I loved how they did that. It was good stuff. But I we want to cha, focus cha. here because we're trying to talk sure. scary things. But yeah, you know, Hanna Barbera did the same thing. But all the celebrity impersonations they would do. It was, voices. That was uh, the the, um, mon- the Mad Monster Party. I really. It, if I, I wish I hadn't been so tired, but it yeah, was a I'll, lot of you fun. You were tired. My yes. goodness, it was past my bedtime. We were trying to watch this. They had a, I got to uh, adjust my biological luck. King Kong type of Yes. At the, well, don't spoil the end. No, I, I see <laughs> he's like a big monster like Yes, guy. by the end, it's like surprising. The, suddenly there's a giant gorilla. But all right, so to kind of just touch on what the story is here is you have Felix Flanken suddenly receives an invitation from his uncle, Boris von Flankenstein, because Boris... Von, von Frankenstein has a new invention where he can make basically he's making a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> he's making matter disappear. It's like it's, ex- it's exploding. And so he wants to show it off to all of his monster friends and he even invites his he wants to pass it on to his nephew Felix Flake and the pharmacist. Well, I'll, I'll try, but... Uh... <laughs> and he's excited to come because Felix thinks he's going to a tropical island in the Caribbean and he's going to this uh, actually a spooky island with a big castle and he doesn't seem to realize is that he's surrounded by monsters, but Hotel Transylvania totally ripped them off. Yeah, big time. Well, it, but because they they're having a party with monsters. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean they, they're having a party because they're celebrating this new invention. They're all going to get to see, and the monsters all want to be the ones to inherit the uh, the scientific knowledge and the know how of in the, in the Dr. Castle. Frankenstein. And they, they're trying to kill Felix, and they start trying to kill Felix. Even Francesca is trying to kill him, but I, I won't want to ruin what, what ha- and, it changes later. But. And they then start trying to turn on one another. It, it, it's just so yes, funny. It's, it's like, so, they're monsters. And the jokes are corny as heck. It's oh, so much fun. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, it's it was it was just it's one of those things you don't roll your eyes so much as you because you can't help but giggle a little bit even yeah. if you're tired you're like oh I get it uh, and well, even some of the, the the food dishes <laughs> that uh, Chef Machiavelli is making and a lot of the, the even the names of some of the characters I mean they're just flat out jokes. Yeah, I mean, you're just like, oh, God. They're just jokes. Uh, and uh, there's even a surprise there at the end that I thought was kind of fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know if any of these characters come back in the second one. But I thoroughly enjoyed this. If you can track this down, and it's not like I said, I got it on Vudu. Uh, for nine ninety nine for digital high definition copy, uh, I, I haven't got to show it to my wife yet. She she's gonna get a kick out of this. It's goofy as heck. It is. It's so much fun. But you and know, I, I, I it's enjoyed, Rankin Bass doing monsters. I enjoyed, I enjoyed, but back then they just went all for it. And they and had that, fun. Uh, it's cornball, but they uh, the jokes were cornball. But they went for uh, accents sometimes yeah. that some people may even find offensive. When I say that, I'm, I'm not justifying and, and, it. And that. nobody's trying to be offensive. No, they're, they're just not. trying they're, to do a character. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> you know? exactly. They're uh, Italian accents yeah. or whatever. And it, that, that's not the, it's not like they're making fun. But what I mean to say is some people get offended. It might be yeah. too easily. But uh, because. It's a whole other issue. It, yeah. yeah, it's a whole other thing. But my whole point is, is uh, in this situation. Uh, just watch and have a good time. Yeah, it, so much it's just for fun. So it's fun. just for fun. There, there is a uh, what I like about th- these types of shows is back in the day. I like whenever you could just go to have uh, a fun fantasy, whatever, for just a half an hour or forty three minutes, depending on how you watch it. With commercials, you know, it's a little longer. Yeah. But when you do that, it's just to get out and have fun, and no one's trying to offend, and no one's. It's just basically, hey, let's get out of the world for a little while. Yeah, let's have some fun with yeah. some monsters. Yeah, uh, yeah in even this the case, creature yeah. from the Black Lagoon. There wasn't. There's not a listed voice for him yeah. though. And I love that about Rankin Bass. They knew how to kind of get you out of the world for a while and just have some fun. They were great at that. Just have some fun. I, I love Rankin. I always will. They're part of our, our not just ours, but really, I say almost at least in America, all of our lives. They, they mm-hmm. whether it be whatever holiday, they had it. They, they did it. They it. made something with it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't do something for every single holiday if they didn't. Well, I think that, don't they? They have a, a Leprechaun's Gold yeah. or they have it because they have a St. Patrick's yeah. thing, uh, which I, I think I watched last year because well, I Evans, actually have that now. Uh, so we was talking a while ago about uh, uh, Peter Cottontail. Mm-hmm. That covers just about every holiday yeah. on that one special. <laughs> it kind of does. I think that I almost think that was their whole intent. Was uh, well, let's see, we're going to cover Easter, except we won't talk about Jesus on yeah, that. But we'll so we talk have a, everything else on there. And there like a, even a Fourth of July thing on or, that. There is even yeah. It's been a while since I've watched that one. Yeah, that one. Has they everything. even did have a Groundhog Day bit there for Jack um, Frost. Yeah, yeah, they, absolutely, <laughs> which, yeah, absolutely. Which is weird because you have Jack Frost and he's such a lovable character, and then they make oh, him a villain yeah. in Frosty too. You but, know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and that's got Andy Griffith. Uh, yes, yes, and, and it drew the, the drew Andy Griffith in. It's oh, so great, and, and I love it, and, and that helped me to learn how to draw him. Yeah, I, they Look, they better back up. Make sure we're talking about the monster stuff. <laughs> well, we're going back to that. Yeah, they, it's they, Halloween time. We're supposed to be talking they, about they scary cover, things. They cover just about every yeah. holiday, not even the official ones, including Halloween. And uh, I think they did a good job. Yes, they did. But now I'm going to hop over because we know, all right, so the Mad Monster Party, which we enjoyed, but Mad Mad Monsters mm. apparently deals with the wedding. Uh, I mean, so it's not it's not connected into the storyline no. before because we have a bride already in there, in a sense, and, Phyllis Diller. Uh, uh, and this was an episode of the ABC Saturday Superstar movie. Yes. It is, and they're putting it in quotes on Wikipedia, related to the 1967 Mad Monster Party. But this is after Baron Henry von Frankenstein, so see, it's a different Baron. Yeah. It's not Boris. Uh, which, of course, they named him Boris because it was Boris Karloff. Yes. I mean, he creates a bride for his monster. He decides to make arrangements for a lavish wedding at the Transylvania Astoria Hotel. Uh, Hotel Transylvania. Yep. Henry's assistant, Igor, is jealous of the monster and wants the bride for his own, much to the annoyance of Henry. Now, I won't read the entire plot because I, I haven't seen this. This one's only 43 minutes, so the other one yeah. was like an hour and 40 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, the other one was Man, really monster long. party was long. This is only 43 minutes long. Uh, and of course, they left some time for uh, for some commercials. Yeah. I might even look to see if I can get a digital copy. And, and watch it seems like one. there was another one that had Mad Mad Man on it because I looked it up. And uh, but I don't think it was them because no, they, 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 I only found two listings that were actually Rankin Bass. And uh, man, maybe I just I didn't know what it was. I, but it looked like it was another holiday. It was Mad 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 something, and I don't know what it was too. I don't know, but I found the uh, Mad Monster Party and Mad 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 Monsters. Yeah. Uh, and which Mad 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 Monsters? I can't give the full 
recommendation because we haven't watched it, but I'm sure it's fun. We watched it's Rankin it. Bass. We didn't yeah, it's a little bit it. in the car. You managed yeah. to find it on your phone, but I'm going to see if I can watch the whole thing at yeah. some point. I, I bet I can find a digital copy on Voodoo. I might have to it look it up. It was goofy what I saw of it, but it was fun. Yeah, because yeah. it's Rankin Bass. Yeah. Rankin Bass always, ma- I mean, Rankin Bass is quality. Yeah. Great animation, they great fun. fun. Uh, and so Mad Monster Party, definitely, you know, there's, I know you can get this on Voodoo. You can buy a digital copy. Uh, you can also buy a Blu-ray if you order online through Best Buy. Uh, which I didn't, I didn't have time to wait for it. I wanted to watch it, so I got a digital copy only. Uh, it was so much fun, and like I said, such corny, and it's a great way to just have some monster fun that your kids can sit and watch, and it's not scary. I see that Funko actually made some toys of Mad Mad Monsters. Oh! Mad 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 Monsters. Oh! I, I saw just now. Uh, I didn't expect that, but it came up just now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. those would be fun. Yeah, little figures and such. How much fun is little that? Little Funko figures of Fang and everybody. Yeah. But anyways, I think we better wrap this up. This wasn't the most Halloween of episodes because there was so much in DC. So all you comic book fans got a bunch of oh, fun. Oh, and- Mad Monsters Party is what it is, actually. Oh, Mad, yeah, Mad Monster. Oh, and they got... And they, oh, those look just like the puppets. Yeah. Oh, wow. Although I think they did try to reduce uh, things on Francesca to make her yeah, balance a little, a little bit. a little more balanced. Because it's is ridiculous. <laughs> it was funny, though. But yeah, so uh, we, of course, want to go through... And I want to thank all the people that helped me out with making the intro, like Karen Kennedy, sure. Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, and Darren Wilhite of the Willow Height and Wall Radio Show. Don't forget to email us at podcast at neverlandpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at NeverlandPCast. We're on Facebook. We have both a fan page for you to like and a group for you to interact with. Please do leave us a voicemail at 816 226 Six four nine two, and don't forget if you go to NeverlandPodcast.com, right there on the front page, you can find my podcast reviews. If you happen to have a podcast and you want to be able to look at your reviews from all around the world, from all the different sources of where reviews are left, it is for just an inexpensive yearly fee. You can get your reviews emailed to you. Uh, but until we meet again, get lost in an adventure. <laughs> Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.